Berlin and welcome to my cozy weekend readathon video. I have this really cool, cool readathon checklist that I created so that I could do some things while I read this weekend. And I'm just so excited to start doing these things. The first thing that I'm gonna do is go to my local coffee shop and read there because that's just such a cozy vibe. Like, is it not? Like, it's just a vibe. Like, just go there, get some reading done. The weather is very, like, gloomy and rainy. It's giving cozy vibes, you know? Guys, this is like a whole side tangent, but like, I really am thinking about starting a book club because this whole cozy reading checklist, I really wanna like, put that in some sort of situation so that other people can do this cozy readathon challenge checklist with me and just talk about the books we're reading and just talk about what we're doing on this cozy weekend readathon thing and like what things you were able to check off your checklist like you know what i mean like i feel like it'll be a great community building type of situation what do you guys think if i had a book club would you join it leave a comment below if you're interested in joining a book club because like if enough people are interested i'm really gonna start with i really want to like a space so i can communicate with people who are like-minded like us i'm even thinking about having a, a discord so where we can like literally like talk to each other and communicate with each other in real time especially if we're doing a readathon weekend like that would be so cool so like if you're interested in that leave a comment below let me know and i would definitely get one started i'm very serious about this like yeah so anyway let's talk about the books that i'm going to be reading during this cozy readathon like let's talk about books so the first book that i'm going to be reading i've already kind of started it currently reading black cake by charmaine wilkerson i'm currently on page 43 and yeah i already know it's gonna be so good like this book is also on hulu and i'm just yeah i I can't even talk. <laughs> I love how this book has like perspective jumping. Like it gives me everyone's perspective, even people from the past of like the whatever the storyline is about, which, okay, this book says, in present day California, Eleanor Bennett's death leaves behind a puzzling inheritance for her two children, Benny and Byron. A traditional Caribbean black cake made from a family recipe with a long history and a voice recording, which is so interesting, a voice recording, like what? Like your mom dies and she leaves you a voice recording? Eee, that's kind of scary. In her message, Eleanor shares a tumultuous story about a headstrong young swimmer who escapes her island home under suspicion of murder. The heartbreaking tale Eleanor unfolds, the secret she still holds back, and the mystery of a long lost child challenge everything the siblings thought they knew about their identities and themselves. Imagine, I can't even imagine. Can Byron and Benny reclaim their once close relationship, piece together Eleanor's true story, and fulfill her final request to share the black cake when the time is right? Will their, oh my God, I already kind of have an idea of what's gonna happen. Will their mother's revelations bring them back together or leave them feeling more lost than ever? Uh, Charmaine Wilkerson's debut novel, the story of how, yeah, dude imagine imagine i just can't imagine like the mom died from the synopsis we know this so the mom died and so even like all the questions hopefully gets answered through this voice memo like i don't know it just sounds so good so i'm reading that once that book is done i'm definitely gonna be reading this one magnolia parks by jessa hastings and like i can just tell that i, I don't know so many people have been telling me to read this book and so I'm gonna read it naturally. So it says, how many loves do you get in a lifetime? <laughs> Magnolia Parks. Oh, I'll talk about this book as I read it, you know, so that, you know, yeah. So without further ado, let's get into this cozy weekend readathon checklist and go to my local coffee shop and get some reading done. Okay.
so I thought I would come back and do a quick update because I'm back from the coffee shop and I when I came back I started reading a little bit I took a quick break from reading so that I can give myself a manicure how did I do guys I painted them pink well actually I put some press on nails on these are from the brand kiss and then I painted them this color that I got from like OPI. Love it. It's a chromey pinky. It's giving spring. It's giving spring. So I absolutely love them. So yeah. Anyway, I just finished doing that and I did like a full on manicure. Like I was dipping my nails in some like, you know, solution stuff. I pushed back my cuticles. I trimmed my actual nails and like I buffed and all the stuff. I moisturized. I did like a hand scrub. All the things. And so this is yeah so anyway that's cute i'm gonna do my best to like maintain my nails because yeah i used to i i just fell off of it and so now i'm i'm ready to get back on it so like that's what's happening yeah yesterday i ordered takeout it was like chinese food and it messed my stomach up so bad <laughs> it was so bad my stomach was hurting like i felt like nauseous the whole day and like that was all i was able to eat like i ate it for lunch and i didn't eat anything the rest of the day because my stomach just didn't feel like and i didn't even eat that much of the chinese food i just felt like oh my god i think i have food poison you know so I, like yeah so anyway saturdays are my inner and outer beauty days where I focus on like self maintenance which is why I did a manicure Saturdays are beauty days and that's just is what it is that's how I'm able to like maintain stuff so in case you're wondering <laughs> which nobody asked but now I'm telling you anyway let's talk about books <laughs> I am reading black cake currently and like I'm not gonna lie I was like how do I put this it's kind of starting off very slow like I understand it's very mysterious and like you're trying to figure out like what is going on between the mom we know that the mom left a voice memo of her life or whatever but like why is it going so slow i do like how it went back in time though like it went back in time it was trying to like give us information about something this is in the back like the secret she still holds and the mystery of a long lost child so it's like what is about this long lost child we all want to know so i do love how it's like trying to keep this mystery going of like who and what you know but also i'm like what like i don't know how do i say get to the point but i understand it's a mystery so it's gonna take a second to get to the point you know what i mean it's just slow and like i, I don't know it's kind of slow so then i was like okay let me read something else so then i started reading magnolia park oh my god this book it's giving gossip girl it's giving modern day gossip girl but based in the uk type stuff did i talk about what this book is about already i don't think i have but let's talk about it. So Magnolia Parks, have you read this book? Please leave a comment below if you have read Magnolia Parks. I know this is not a new book, but like, is this new to you? Let me know. Have you heard of it? Let me know in the comments below. But anyway, in the back it says, Magnolia Parks is a person. Like, I didn't even know that. I thought like, what is Magnolia Parks about? Turns out Magnolia is a girl, okay? Magnolia Parks is a beautiful, affluent, self-involved, and mildly neurotic London socialite. Gossip Girl, right? BJ Ballantyne, why is his name in all caps? Is Britain's most notorious and photographed bad boy who broke her heart. But these two are meant to be and everyone knows it. It's giving... Okay. Magnolia and BJ are written in the stars, just suspended in a strange kind of love that looks like hurting each other a lot of the time. She dates other people to keep him at bay. He sleeps with other girls to get back at her for it, but at the end of every sad endeavor to get over one another, it's still each other they crawl back to. Like, oh my god, this is so toxic. I have like this thing about reading toxic books. Like, I read Colleen Hoover's book, It Ends With Us, and like, that book was very toxic, right? Have you read that book? Leave a comment below. I thought it was toxic, and I was like, <gasps> and I know it was a series. I did not continue on, because I was like, I don't want to be brainwashed by this toxicity, you know? But that's just me. So I'm really hesitant about reading toxic books, but whatever let's get into it because i do like this talk i do like it though i do like it i'm not even gonna lie but it says finally after years of this their dysfunction is catching up with them pulling at their seams and fraying the world they've built but they're not ready to let go not yet at least as the crack starts to show and secrets begin to surface magnolia and bj are forced to face the formidable question they have been avoiding all their lives how many loves do you really get in a lifetime this was Jessa Hastings' debut novel and it turned into this like huge series, which is amazing, amazing. Once Black Cake started taking too slow to pick up or whatever, I started reading this one. I haven't even read that much of it. Literally, I'm on page 16. I read like a chapter. Oh my God, now that I'm on chapter two, 
this is also a perspective jumping book i'm just floating like everything is everything in my life is perfect like this is all working out for me like this is great this is exactly what i love i love knowing what everyone is really thinking but letting it be a mystery between each other ah, it's giving toxic <laughs> but anyway dude i already can tell i'm gonna like this book it starts off like hmm, what should i say about this actually the first chapter is magnolia's perspective which makes sense because the book is literally called Magnolia Parks, and it starts off with Magnolia. It starts off with her talking to BJ. This is her toxic boyfriend, but is he an ex? I don't even know what they are, but she's with him, and they're getting ready to go out, and they go out. So I don't know, this is kind of, it started off toxic already. Like, she was dating this dude, which we, this is not a spoiler, because it, all, it says that this is what they do. Like, this is what they do. She's dating somebody who just broke up with her, and he's coming back talking about, he just slept with a model, and so everyone's just like a little uncomfortable. That's how the book started. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna like this book. Today I'm going to go to the grocery store and just like restock on all my groceries because I literally have not been here for a week so I don't have many food or if I did have it it's like bad now because that's what it's like when you live alone but anyway um, I need to like go through my fridge dump stuff if you know you know I need to restock my fridge and then I also need to go to Ulta Beauty today because I need to pick up more like makeup stuff like I'm definitely out I finally feel like I'm out of my reading slump as I'm reading I'm like feeling that excitement again but then I'm like okay I need to go do all these other things but then I'm like no I'm setting aside time to read I'm gonna set aside time to do all the other things don't worry we have time the sun is staying out longer now so like that is cool so that's my plan for Sunday like I said I'm gonna be reading a lot I'm also gonna be cooking I'm planning on cooking one of my favorite meals which is this shrimp and corn soup that I literally have been cooking ever since I learned how to cook it I have been eating it like all the time even when it's hot outside I still feel like it's a good time to eat shrimp and corn soup like it is so good in regard to like book talk stuff last night I read a little bit I read Magnolia Park currently I'm on page 41 there are 430 pages exactly in this book let's talk about it I don't know what's going on like i don't know how the story is gonna end i don't know what i don't know where the narration is driving me to you like you know how like with black kick is very obvious we're trying to find out who the mom really was basically and how that's gonna affect byron and benny but with this one it's like just watching an episode of gossip girl like this stuff is what's happening one thing i love that you know is the perspective jumping so whenever we jump perspectives it does give us some history on magnolia and bj valentine who is this like you know london socialized according to the synopsis which as i'm 
reading? They are. It's literally like Gossip Girl where they're all wearing like fancy clothes and they're doing like fancy stuff and they're dancing and they're going to each other. Like when rich people, like you know how you have like a rich circle and like the children of the rich families hang out with each other's families. Like their mom is having a, a celebration so all the rich kids and all their families are going to the celebration. It's literally like Gossip Girl. Let me take a step back and say if you watch Gossip Girl, please leave a comment below. Let me know if you've seen it and if you haven't seen it. I'm really curious, like who has not seen Gossip Girl? Girl, let me know. Anyway, back to this. I love it. One thing I'm super, super curious is to like, what happened between, like what started the spark of like the dysfunction? Because it sounds like from the synopsis and like the first chapter, they were like a match made in heaven. They are like, the ultimate couple. It's giving Blair and Nate, right? From Gossip Girl. It's giving like, we are the golden couple. My family is beautiful. Your family is beautiful. We're all rich. That's what that was giving. But then it keeps talking about how BJ did something that was so unforgivable that it was so bad that basically started the trickle down of their their problems i want to know what he did i have a good idea of what he did i mean can't you kind of guess what he would do every time it jumps perspectives it goes back and tells us what happened from their own side of the story like we hear from magnolia like she thinks this is bj like you know he was this blah, blah, blah. and then you go to bj and he's like i'm in love with her like you know what's crazy is like they don't, I guess they know, but they don't know how crazy they are about each other. It is so obvious that they're in love with each other. He's like, I love her. She's mine. She's my girl. Yes, I do mess up things, but she's mine. That's my girl. And she's kind of like, I hate to love him. Like, I love him. And he's like, his smile. He knows how to get me. He knows what to say. But I hate him, but I love him. And it's just like, ah low-key relatable in a way like if you have ever been in a relationship where it's like this is bad but i like you but this is bad what or was it just me yeah so that's that <laughs> i love i love and like i just want to keep reading but i have some other things to do Let's talk about everything that I got from the store. I'm not gonna really do like a grocery haul because literally, if you have seen any of my other vlogs, I buy the same stuff almost every week. I bought grapes, I bought bananas, apples, and blueberries, which I don't always buy those fruits at the same time. I either buy like two or one and just snack on that throughout the week because like fruit, when you live alone, fruit really goes bad a lot faster with me because I don't eat all of it all day. I'm not even here all day. Like I literally am at work all the time, all day, every day. So if I were here longer, then sure the fruit would be gone. Gone, but because I spend like 12 hours gone yeah that's my day so anyway I buy the same stuff like every week the same fruit the same meal like it's the same stuff the only thing that's kind of different is like I bought these oatmeal cup pouches pack things I also got Starbucks and espresso pots which I don't normally always get and really that's all those are only like the newest additions to my stuff yeah, that's it. All right, then I went to Ulta Beauty. And like, I got there early. I thought Ulta Beauty opened at like 10. It opened at 11 a.m. So I got to Ulta at like 10.50, thinking that I was gonna get there after they had already been open for a few minutes. Nope, it was all locked up and closed. So I had to sit in my car for like 10 minutes. Anyway, so it's time for an Ulta Beauty haul. Naturally, naturally. Okay, so I got a bunch of stuff. Like, honestly, this bag is pretty heavy. So let's talk about what I got. I don't even know. I didn't need to get this, but I, every time I go to Ulta Beauty, I always pick up some sort of face mask or the eye mask. Like, I always get, because they have the best, like, in my opinion, they always have, like, first of all, they have so many options for face masks. If you go to Target, they do have a lot of face masks, but not nearly as many as Ulta Beauty. So today I got the rainbow mask. I've never had this before. It looks so cute. Like the packaging is so eye-catching, you know? It's a rainbow mask. It has cranberry, papaya extract, vitamin C, avocado oil, hyaluronic acid, blueberry extract, and retinol. And I love how like these are like rainbow 
things, colors of the rainbow. It says maximum loving for your skin, essence mask for printed hearts, bright, dewy, youthful, bouncy, and healthy skin. Made in Korea. It goes on to tell you in the back like what each of those things do for the skin. Like it talks about how vitamin C plumps skin to help reduce appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Stuff like that. And I like to put this in my fridge so that when I do put this on my face, it's like cool and refreshing. I got this NYX palette makeup palette like i don't really have a certain brand or people i don't know much about makeup i'm not even gonna lie i really want to get into it but for a long time i had like perfect skin <laughs> i had like clear skin like majority of my life and i didn't even really do anything like i would just wet a towel wash my face and like put lotion on and call it a day like i had clear skin but whenever I graduated college and became a full-on like teacher, that's when my face started breaking out like crazy. And I think it had a lot to do with like stress, a lot to do with like the food I was eating. And I think that I just age, I'm aging very slowly. Like I don't look my age at all. Like I, I'm pretty sure I look 10 years younger than I actually am, which is really cool. But it also means I think I'm aging like 10 years slower than the people who are my age would have aged. Like all of my friends already had their acne when they were like 15 and 16. Whereas me, I had like baby clear skin when I was 15 and 16. So I, I feel like I'm just aging very slowly, but I'm okay with it. Anyway, let me go back on topic. I got this makeup palette because I really wanted the neutral tones. It literally says it's like warm neutral tones. I just needed more like brown colors because I'm a brown girl. So anyway, I can't wait to use this. I'm definitely going to be using this on my skin starting tomorrow because, yeah. I also got this NYX Epic Wear Eyeliner Waterproof Eye and Body Liquid Liner. Body? Okay. This is my first time getting this one. It has like a little dip brush that you dip the stick in and then you like basically paint your, your eyeliner on. I normally get the eyeliner that's like a felt tip that you kind of like a marker like you draw it on and I love that but I wanted to try this. I don't know. We're getting creative over here. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I also got this Shea Moisture Pink Himalayan Salt Relaxing Body Wash. If you've watched any of my hygiene shopping videos, you know you know that I'm a die-hard Dove body wash, Dove scrub, Dove everything girly. Like everything I get for body is Dove because it really does make my skin feel smooth, clean, clean. I have like super sensitive skin and you don't want to just put anything anywhere. <laughs> so anyway, Dove is always a flex. And like whenever I started going to like a gynecologist, because when you turn 21, you start going to the gynecologist to get like yearly checkups and like pap smear stuff. This is like TMI, but like if you're a woman, we do this, and if you're not a, uh, not if you're not a woman, but if you don't do this, then hey, hi, and now you know some things. But anyway, when I started going to them, they were like, oh, Dove was like the recommended brand to use for like cleaning the body. But anyway, they didn't have Dove at Ulta Beauty, so I went with this. Shea Moisture, I feel like is a close, healthy option because Shea Moisture is really popular for me with like hair stuff. I only know Shea Moisture for like hair, but I imagine that I imagine that it would still be good. <laughs> I hope. I love how it says like right there somewhere like self-care for your senses. So this is like a self-care body wash. I do still have a little bit of my Dove stuff left, but I'm definitely going to use this whenever that runs out, which is going to be any day now. Then I also needed some face wash. I, I just need it. <laughs> I needed some face wash and I am a diehard CeraVe face wash girly. Hello. Hydrating cream to foam cleanser. I have been using this like religiously for years. Years I'm talking. Cleanses, hydrates, and removes makeup without disrupting the protective skin barrier. I love how it says removes makeup. I don't like to use makeup wipes because it like burns my skin. Like, like I said, I have really sensitive skin. I just learned that CeraVe is the way to go. Like it does not make my, my skin break out ever. And I have noticed that ever since I started using this stuff, like if I do have acne, it's very much hormonal acne. Now I know that when I get a pimple, oh, my period is coming or I'm either on my period or I ate like trash or something. But now I don't really get acne as much. It all started when I switched over what I was using to wash my face. I've tried like clean and clear, which made my face feel like worse. Like it completely dried out my skin. I use uh, Cetaphil, I think is what it's called. I don't know. Something with a 
yeah but then when i use this that's when my whole life changed like i have had no problems with my skin in that way since using this stuff so yeah and that is everything that i got from ultra beauty it was overall a very successful ultra beauty trip and if you have used any of these products let me know in the comments below now let's get back into reading i'm kind of multitasking where i'm doing laundry and reading at the same time and just trying to get some things done so let's continue on with the reading vlog I just finished the book, Black Cake, and we need to talk about it, obviously. Dude, first of all, I actually have a lot to say about this for some reason. The storyline, the plot, everything, the setting, I loved, I loved the scene. Like, I love the idea behind the concept, like the storyline. I feel like the main message that I received was like, well, I'm gonna say that for the, like, the next section. Let me not get ahead of myself. Spoilers. But anyway, I gave this book 
3.75 stars because in the beginning it was like really cool like i said the storyline was cool i love the perspective jumping i love knowing like what like what everyone is thinking and stuff but like i just feel like this book was so slow and drawn out like even to the end of the book like yes it was still answering questions but it was just so slow i was just ready to be like okay like get on with it like what you know like i don't know how to describe it like the whole time i just kept feeling like a little bit annoyed at how slow it was going because i was like okay like and then it took a long time to like close out the book like it took a long time to close it out because of the stuff that they decided to do to close out the situation we basically find out everything that happened in the mother's life she left this voice recording basically explaining to her children who she really was which is so scary and crazy honestly because it's like imagine thinking one thing of your mother and then you hearing her tell you that she lived a whole different life basically as the reader we find out about these things so slowly that i'm like okay it was so slow it was just saying everything around the thing and i i don't like when stuff like i just was like come on go faster i need more like and like i don't know that's why i think i like fantasy it's always like oh, the dragons are coming you know but anyway <laughs> yeah i don't know like it was a good story it was very like wholesome in a way because it makes me think like man i'm gonna say this part for the next session <laughs> anyway like i said i gave this book 3.75 stars i didn't hate it I didn't love it. It's not like I will say, oh my god, I want to read this again immediately. It wasn't like I closed the book and went back to page one. Like, I have done that with some books. This one was not one of them. So that's really unfortunate, you know, but it is what it is. I'm so excited that I'm finished it though because now I know. Now I know. And now I'm ready for the next book. Also, in this reading vlog, I was reading Magnolia Parks, but I have not completed this book yet. I was reading a little bit this morning and basically I still am meeting new characters. I'm on like chapter 10 and I'm still meeting new characters. And so right now I feel like I don't know who anyone is, but I still really haven't like connected or grown a connection or relationship with any of the characters yet except like Magnolia and BJ. I just met Magnolia's sister and then I met these other girls. And so like I'm just we're still meeting people so i'm still like i don't really know what's going on i don't know how this is going to end but I, i'm super excited to continue on with this book because i know this is like a really popular series and i believe like she just released another novel in this series so like it's less than a year old that's really cool so that's why i kind of want to like see what's up i do like it i do like how modern it is but uh yeah i'm still meeting characters like nothing really is going on except like oh they're at this place and then they met these people and this is who this is they're explaining who the people are like that's literally it this is where i'm going to leave you if you want to see more of magnolia parts then be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next reading vlog because the next reading vlog will contain the things about magnolia parks okay guys this is a book lover sorority portion of the video this is where i give spoilers and i talk about my reaction to spoilers so like if you don't want to know any of the spoilers keyword spoiler alerts then uh you might want to stop watching right now okay <laughs> why all they had to do was just say something somebody should have said something somebody they just need to open their mouth like what is the mother's name she has so many names i don't even know which one i'm gonna use let's use eleanor right but eleanor isn't even her name like she took on this other person's identity who died and i was like oh my god that is so sad but i'm like i guess when you're running from scary thugs on this island you have to change your identity you have to let people believe that you are dead but then it's like man that screwed up everything because now people in your homeland think you don't exist and that's just heartbreaking like that was hard to read for some reason for i was like ugh, that gave me the ick a little bit which is why i'm like oh i can see why people would like this kind of book but i'm just like ugh, like eesh, you know that's rough <laughs> that's just how i feel about that one and then two like they never revealed who they were to anybody and the mom is so messed up she never told her husband of like five decades that she had a whole other kid just never told him <laughs> just never told him he died not knowing so i mean one thing this book taught me is first of all you never really know who someone really is you never know the demons that people have in their closets okay people have a lot of demons you know and even if you feel like they're telling you the truth they might be telling you half of the truth so it's best to just trust your own self just 
yeah, that's what this book is teaching me. But then it comes to find out everyone has a private investigator. Everyone looked up, like everyone was trying to find each other. Everyone knew every, but nobody said anything. So I'm like, why did I go like 50 years in silence? Like that is just painful. I'm like, ugh. It may, I guess it triggers me a little bit because I'm like, maybe I have some things that I need to tell some people before we all go, you know? <laughs> I know that's very dramatic, but it's like, it, like, I don't know, I just, ugh. it's so relatable because I'm like, people just assume that people know everything. People just assume the worst. Like, if I tell you this, I'm going to end up dead or whatever. Like, no, like, really nobody cares that much. <laughs> yeah, like, that was just annoying. And then Benny and Byron, it's like, Benny, oh my God, the girl, why was, they were just, everyone was just so stubborn. Her story, like, okay, she likes women. Okay, she likes men. She wants to cook. Okay, she went to university and her college professor, like, made a move on her. She didn't tell anybody. She just quit the university. And then she started dating this dude that was beating her up so bad that she couldn't go to her own father's funeral. Girl, like, when I tell you, this is just so, like... <laughs> Why didn't she say something? Okay, you like women. You, girl, it was 2018, I believe, when this was... Like, they would give us timestamps. This is 2018. Girl, President Obama had, had, like, it's all good. Like, do you, you know? Like, and if your parents were super hard up about it, they didn't approve. Like, they were very much like, oh, we didn't want this for you type. But then she just literally left and never came back. I'm like, it's one thing to drop a huge bomb on a person and then be like, <gasps> at their reaction. But it's another thing to drop a huge bomb on a person and be like, <gasps> to their reaction and just never come back. Because I'm like, she didn't really give them a chance to like, understand like she told them one time on thanksgiving a few minutes or a few hours before guests were showing up so like what did she expect you know they were literally like shocked that dad walked away but i'm not gonna lie i would have been like you know dang you know they didn't accept me either but like their family like every one of them is wrong like for them all to wait that long to reconnect i'm like dude like especially the parents i'm like y'all are terrible like your daughter told you something about her and y'all completely did that she ran away you never felt the need to like reach out to her but then it turns out the mom was reaching out to her and then she just wasn't responding or answering and then i'm like <sighs> she just felt like she couldn't tell them everything and that's really sad because i'm like that part is also relatable like i've been there where people were reaching out to me and calling me but i was just so at a point where i was so mad that i didn't care what they had to say i was like nope i don't want to hear it don't care nope nope it doesn't matter now because it's already over like that's literally how i felt about some things so yeah once i'm done i'm done and so i feel like that part is relatable in a, in a sense with benny how her family was trying to reach out to her like a few like years later or whatever and she was just like no like i can't do it or it would have just opened up that whole wound door again so she just didn't do it you know and i was like that's relatable like i keep saying because when i went through something terrible yeah i shut everybody out and when people try to call me i was like nope and then i would move on i mean like i wouldn't even care but i realized that it's really messed up especially when it's like family trying to reach out to you and you're just ignoring them like that's ugh, that's that gives me the ick you know so we don't do that but uh i have done that and that's really it makes me feel terrible you know so i especially because i don't live around them <laughs> i have to make up more of an effort to uh sustain maintain that relationship those relationships with my family Anyway, that was a whole side note. <laughs> Let's talk about Magnolia Parks. I am only on chapter 10. I haven't read that much. But literally, I'm on page uh, 77. Hey, 77, lucky numbers. But anyway, I'm on page 77. So it's like, I don't, I can't really like definitively say something about this book yet. But I am about to continue reading like literally right now. If you're interested in seeing more of Magnolia Parks and my reactions, what I think of it and more books, then subscribe and stay tuned for the next reading vlog. Bye-bye.